Hello, I am Dr. Jung Young On. This is the case discussion to share clinical difficulties and find the best treatment. We have three doctors, Dr. Kim Kyung Won, Dr. Kim Gi Sung, and Dr. Kim Young Tae. Hello. For the dental TV viewers on the dental site, on the right hand side of the video player, there is a real time chatting window for you to post questions to us or share comments. Let's look at the case to be discussed. The patient is a 66 year old female with hypertension, diabetes, PTCA with stent insertion. If you look at the story, the patient came to me last year for prosthesis. The residual roots of 12, 16, and 22 were extracted. After that, she didn't come back, and recently she wants to receive the treatment. In the dentulous region, the alveolar ridge atrophy is observed. There is a lack of space for prosthesis in the interior region. What will be the best way for prosthesis treatment by creating vertical space? It looks like before and after the extraction, the patient has neglected the treatment. If it was treated earlier, it would have been better. What do you think, doctors? The occlusion is collapsed and the vertical dimension is lost. I'm not sure. Dr. Kim Gi Sung is a prosthodontist, so he can help us. I can talk about the prosthodontics, but uh, she has systemic diseases. If that is addressed, I can suggest some solutions, but uh, this is challenging. The bone is resorbed. If you look at the mandible, I don't think there is a big problem in placing fixed type of prosthesis by placing implants, but there is a vertical dimension problem. Now we have different uh, periodontal and uh, prosthodontal departments, so if a prosthodontist uh, resolves some of the problems, uh, we can uh, address the rest. She has uh, various systemic diseases. My colleague doctors, senior junior doctors, ask me questions regarding that because I am with the big general hospital, so uh, I will think about that through this case. The audience, uh, please think about what your approach will be by listening to this. If you have any good ideas, please share that on the real-time chatting window. So let's have a look at how the doctors approach this. Dr. Kim Young Tae. Implant positions have been thought about. Number three and four, uh, the fixed prosthesis can be delivered in quadrant one. Number two is very narrow, so a uh, ponte can be used there. So a five unit implant. Implants can be placed on the mandible matching maxilla, so up to number six. Number two is most challenging. If I were to make the whole left side, that can be splinted. It can be placed as a single tooth. At one time, placing one implant per tooth was a rule, but now a fewer number of implants can be used to support larger number of prosthesis without a problem. And it's better in terms of the periimplantitis. It's hard to place an implant in narrow space, but maybe number two, number 22, maybe I have to place an implant. Precondition for that is a vertical dimension should be adjusted first. I need to consult with the prosthodontist. Therefore, today I am going to rely on Dr. Kim Gi Sung.
for this. But as I said at the beginning, the patient has so many systemic disease, including hypertension, DM, and she has a history of stent. And do I need to treat this or do I need to send her to general hospital? These days, we have so many senior patients. Therefore, I need to understand my limitations in treating patients. So based on my criteria working in a general hospital, let me explain like this. And I will also explain some guidelines. If the patient is on an anticoagulant, can we just treat them? Depending on the type of anticoagulant, it could be different. However, if the patient has history of stent, I think we need to consult with the medical doctor. If the patient has been monitored for a long time by ourselves, we can skip that part. But we need to ask the medical doctor whether we can stop the medication. Not only that, renal failure, liver disease, hematological malignancy, these are the bleeding risks. Therefore, we need to take the history of those. Most importantly, we need to get all the information from the patients. Sometimes patients know the answer. They say, I can stop the medication, but I need to take the antibiotics before surgery. Still, we, you need to ask the medical doctor. Anticoagulant, aspirin, Plavix, or NOACs, the novel medication. I have not seen patients on NOAC that much. We don't need to know all of them. We can just refer to the result of the consultation. We just need to know offering aspirin or Plavix. Guidelines of ADA, Wafferin or Plavix or Aspirin are taken by patients who have experienced a deep vein thrombosis or embolism. So they need to be on the medication. That is the guideline. But uh, there is a increased bleeding risk, which may put the patient in danger. Aspirin, we have consensus on aspirin. We don't have to stop them. After stent surgery, single or dual drugs of aspirin is given for a year. We shouldn't arbitrarily stop the medication. And uh, you can keep the patient on the medication or get a consultation from a medical doctor. Warfarin is controversial. Neurology says a patient should be continuously on this medication to prevent stroke because the life of a patient is more important. As surgeons say, INR needs to be measured and we need to identify the situation of the patient. The patient would know about them. I asked an oral surgeon in our hospital, and he said that there is no need to stop warfarin in general. And he said as much as possible, the patient should be continuously on warfarin. If they say we can stop it, then we need to follow it. We don't need to be too much worried about the patient on warfarin, like before. NOAC is very good compared to the conventional agents. According to the recommendation, that doesn't need to be stopped for small surgeries. So anticoagulants can be used while we treat them. However, we need to get the consultation from a medical doctor. And there was a Korean study 
and the recommendation is we need to minimize the treatment under the medication, like um, extracting one tooth only, etc. So that's the recommendation. Risk assessment of bleeding. Some are classified. So if it doesn't cause a bleeding, it would not be a problem. It causes bleeding, we need to avoid them. What is important is we need to identify what drugs the patient is on. And aspirin can be used for implant placement. Personally, I haven't experienced any problems with that. And if there is inflammation, that should be controlled before the treatment can be provided. Another disease, DM, I believe you already know about that. No dentist seem to know exactly what uncontrolled DM means. People say the patient says the figure is 200. Is it okay to treat the patient or not? Criteria for diagnosis, normal pre-diabetes and diabetes, we don't diagnose them, so we don't need to be concerned about that. But roughly, we need to understand that uh, DM is under control if HbA 6.5 to 7. And if you can read the chart, it would be good. Fasting plasma level, less than 130 milligrams, two hours after meal. The figure should be less than 180. Uncontrolled DM means normal level, less than 70 or bigger than 200 milligram. Patients know if they say they are not controlled, we should not proceed with surgery. If the surgery involves bleeding, we need to avoid that. And these are not absolute numbers. Even though the glucose level is 156, you can go ahead. If the patient is on diabetes medication, if it is controlled, you can give a standard uh, treatment. When the inflammation is under control, it helps the treatment. As for the uncontrolled DM, you need to communicate with the patient with the numbers so that you identify whether DM is under control or not. When we talk about this, the systemic diseases, the story can get long, but uh, I tried to make it brief, but um, it got prolonged. I talked about this with uh, Dr. Kim Kyung Won. Dr. Kim Kyung Won doesn't agree with me on some of the points. I want to hear his opinion. I am with the University Hospital. I see many diabetes patients and the stent patients. Stent is covered by the National Health Insurance. And there are many patients who have a stent in the coronary artery. And many patients are on antiplatelets and anticoagulants, as Dr. Kim Young tech talked about it. But let me clarify the terms. PTCA is the name of the disease of the patient in the case under discussion. PTCA with the stent insertion. PTCA stands for percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty through skin percutaneous on endoscope is inserted to the coronary artery, which is uh, at the heart. Catheter is inserted to the coronary artery to expand it using a balloon or a stent. And if you insert a stent, PTCA with stent insertion is the correct term. PTCA, percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty, usually that is performed going through the fem femoral artery. Radio or ulna artery can be used as well to go to the heart. Another thing, PCI stands for percutaneous coronary intervention. To be specific, PCI is more broader in concept than PTCA. 
using a balloon or stent can be inserted for the intervention. Today, drug eluting stent became available, which is more advanced stent implantation. And the coronary atherectomy is also under PCI. One more thing, internists or thoracic surgeons talk about CABG, CABG, which stands for coronary artery bypass graft. PTCA or PCI uses catheter inserted through femoral artery, whereas CABG, cabbage is an open heart surgery. Saphenous vein is taken from a leg and grafted. Compared to PCI, when percutaneous approach doesn't work, cabbage is performed. So that was the clarification of terms. Let's talk about the hemostasis mechanism, which you learned in the dental school. I brought a diagram. When blood vessel is damaged, to put it simply, the first action that occurs is the vessel constriction. The vessel is constricted. Artery or arterial has a smooth muscles. When the vessel is cut, the vessel constricts and moves on to the coagulation phase. So vessel constriction is very important. When vein is cut, the blood drips more. After that phase, platelets get aggregated, forming platelet plug. Up to there, it's called the primary hemostasis. Coagulation cascade happens next. That's the coagulation mechanism. Thrombin is generated, leading to fibrin and the blood clots. When we talk about a blood coagulation test, the most basic tests include three, blood test and CBC. The bleeding test is testing the function of platelets. Using a lancet, a small cut is made in the air to do the bleeding test. To check the function of the platelets, CBC is the blood cell count, number of platelets. Normally, it should range 150 to 400,000. When the platelet numbers less than 100,000, hemostasis cannot occur properly, leading to pentacytopenia or thrombocytopenia. PT and APTT. Prothrombin time. When I was a resident, I shook the blood measuring the time in an emergency room. So these days, we use INR, the ratio. So PT and the APTT are related to the coagulation. When we talk about anticoagulants, there are antiplatelet drugs, including aspirin or Plavix, clopidogrel, as Dr. Kim young tek said, that has to do the primary hemostasis, next anticoagulants, such as warfarin or comodin. So you need to understand anticoagulants are different from antiplatelets. Vitamin K is the antagonist for warfarin, as a Dr. Kim young tek said, toward the end, NOAC, novel or coagulant agent. In short, NOAC, that's a new drug 
Warfarin should be monitored with INR, PT, but warfarin can be monitored quite easily, so that is why it is used widely these days. But still, the conventional drug is warfarin. Some of the warfarin can be replaced by NOEC, not all of them. Uh, NOEC can be stopped for a short period of time. If a patient will receive surgery today who is on NOEC, if the patient comes without morning dosage, the blood control can be made much easier. So warfarin is different from NOEC. Sometimes dentists get confused over thrombolytic agents, such as uh, urokinase or streptokinase. That's different agent, so you need to identify whether the patient is on antiplatelet such as aspirin or chlorpidogra or anticoagulants, warfarin or NOEC. You need to differentiate them. So recently, we have many senior patients, therefore, they say we should not stop medication. I went to So Asan Hospital homepage, Pediatric Cardiology Department. So it says here, warfarin dosage should vary from patient to patient. The warfarin is the same but anticoagulation mechanism can be different from patient to patient. Therefore, INR should be measured, should be monitored. In general, in the internal medicine or thoracic surgery, INR is recommended to be 2 to 2.7. 2.5 to 3.5 range is also used for the control. Here, this is the information from the pediatric cardiology, antipyretic analgesic ibuprofen can cause problems in patients on warfarin, anticoagulants, hemostasis can be a problem, so we shouldn't use NSAID, but uh, acetaminophen, antipyretic analgesic should be used, Tylenol, acetaminophen should be used. For a dental treatment where bleeding is expected, the medication should be stopped for three to four days. It is written here for children. But we have many senior patients, just like in the internal medicine. We need to be very careful when bleeding occurs during extraction. For simple extraction, we need to apply pressure on the site so that bleeding can be stopped. And we also should suture the site. As Dr. Kim Young tek said before, the oral surgeon in Ilsan Hospital, he is referring to the hemostasis process during surgery by performing the surgery very meticulously. Here it talks about the prevention of endocarditis. In the past, amoxicillin was given, and recently, uh, the medication is given one hour prior regarding antibiotics to prevent endocarditis. You can refer to the information here. Diabetes was explained very well by Dr. Kim young tek but let me show you just one slide. We pay attention to the fasting blood sugar. We pay attention to that only if it is below 150. I don't really be worried about that, so DM can be considered under control. But what I want to say is that we need to pay attention to HbA1c, which was briefly mentioned before. Dentists tend to ignore this value, but this is checked by internists always. HbA1c is a glycated hemoglobin in red blood cells. The red blood cells live in the blood for two to three months. So if this figure is not good, the blood sugar control is not properly done. It should be four to six percent 
normal and for diabetic it should be maintained below 6.5 to 7 percent even though the fasting blood sugar is low if this is not controlled that means blood sugar in normal day-to-day -day life it's not controlled pretty well so hba1c should be checked blood test is important when a patient comes whether the sugar level has been controlled for the last two to three months we need to check hba1c if the number is okay you'll be able to treat the patient without uh, problems i gave a rather lengthy explanation but i hope it helps for conscious station endoscope in GI, do they stop aspirin? Yes, aspirin should be stopped. Bleeding in GI is a major problem, so they stop the aspirin medication. When it comes to dental treatment, recently aspirin, as Dr. Kim young tae said, aspirin can be kept. If you take just aspirin, the patient says um, it can be stopped or continued because internist uh, says that to patients. But aspirin is taken with the chlorpidogrel together. If both of them are not stopped, platelets are not formed, so early hemostasis cannot be performed. If you press cause on the site, hard once coagulation occurs coagulation phase kicks in it will be okay so for patients with both medication aspirin can be kept but uh, chlorpidogrel should be stopped for four to five days when warfarin is not stopped when you extract the tooth you need to pay extra attention to hemostasis Otherwise, the patient comes back to you the next day and says, I bled a bucket full of blood. In a university hospital, it goes like this. If an internist says, um, warfarin cannot be stopped, the patient is hospitalized. It is bridged to heparin for a short-term control during extraction of a tooth and the patient is put back on warfarin after it. We have to be conservative and we have to do extraction very meticulously to reduce the risk of bleeding. When a patient comes comes to a private practitioner, I didn't know NOAC is the word instead of NOAC. Can the patient treat it after a day of discontinuation of NOAC? Of course, after a consultation and warfarin should be discontinued, right? INR is important when it comes to warfarin. Usually, that should be discontinued for three to five days. INR should be checked, but uh, private practitioner cannot do that. In a university hospital, I extract after checking INR. So in general, if it is below 1.2, it's okay. But if it is below 1.5, it's good. As you said, if you look at the paper from Insan Hospital, there was a study of three groups, discontinued group, continued group, and the group switched to heparin. But if you look at INR, it's very low too. That's why the group on the medication continuously didn't have a lot of bleeding and the meticulous extraction contributed to hemostasis. For a private practitioner, I believe it's not easy to treat the patient on warfarin. If a patient should continue warfarin, I would refer the patient. Private practitioners get nervous when bleeding happens rather than pain. So we are afraid of bleeding. In my view, ER is in each hospital, you need to identify where ER is. <laughs> I'm supposed not to tell this, uh, the interns in ER would not like this. In our hospital, we have ER at the backup. 
So uh, to be extracted when the patient is on warfarin and the patients are referred to us. So I don't really worry about extracting teeth. When I make an incision, I get the feel and uh, when it bleeds, uh, I'm a little bit afraid. Recently, as you said before, we have many senior patients. The internal medicine also say if the medication is discontinued, a life-threatening accident can occur. So they recommend the continuation of the medication. If the patient has a um, poor condition, including serious inflammation, uh, I make the patient hospitalized and uh, switch to heparin. Patients are very worried if the internal medicine says uh, the medication should not be discontinued. So you need to consult with the uh, internist for the matter. The case under discussion is about uh, the patient with uh, systemic diseases. Let's go back to the case under discussion. Uh, Dr. Kim ki would you make the final comment on that? Let's talk about the second option, focusing on prostodontic treatment. The patient's vertical dimension is lowered. The vertical dimension of occlusion means when the teeth or wax rims are situated in maximum intercuspation or contact, when video is reduced. To recover that, according to a textbook, various methods can be used to determine the vertical dimension. Many researchers claim their methods are very good, but these are not very easy methods. So I use the speech or the appearance of uh, the patient. This is my picture of my heyday. It is based on A1 equals A2. From the eyes to the lips is the same as ANS to the bottom of the jaw. This is the Willis method to measure video of um, identless patient. There are similar ways, and uh, this is uh, Mackey method, which is similar. When the video is lost, when there is a remaining teeth, we can use uh, the existing denture or remaining natural teeth to measure that. If they are not available, wax rim or uh, the appearance can be used to identify video. These tools can be used. I borrowed this material from my beloved Dr. Park. I want to introduce a case of intern Jung Ji Won at the Prestontal Department, Seoul National University Dental Hospital. This is very well made case, so let me explain that. 68 year old male patient, various problems are seen here, especially the occlusal vertical dimension is pretty lowered. How to raise video? The prosthetic approach is very difficult. An intern made a presentation with this case, which is a very good case. A vertical dimension is measured based on the face. So we decided to raise four to five millimeters of video at the canine. Vertical dimensions at the canine are measured. Increasing video of canine by four millimeters is the treatment plan. According to the plan, occlusal rim was made and the stent was made. If you raise VDO, 
TMJ trouble can be resulted. So we check whether they create any problem. Based on that, wax up is done and the provisional is made and uh, tried in the mouth of a patient. Here is the difference between the private practitioners and those in a university like an intern. The teeth need to be reduced all at the same time to fabricate the provisional. It requires a lot of efforts. It is not done in stages. The teeth need to be reduced at the same time. It requires a lot of time. So this is a more accurate approach. Based on the plan, the video, implants are placed. It is not that implants are placed first and the video is adjusted. According to the set video, implants are placed using the OSTEMS One Guide. I uh, lectured about the One Guide to the prosthodontist in the seminar last year, and implants are placed on the maxilla. Based on newly set video, bite registration is made. In provisional, the new one is made. Ultimately, final impression is taken. Definitive prosthesis was delivered. This process is authentic, described in a textbook, which is not a not an easy case. This is the post-op X-ray. It took a lot of time and very well done. This is not easy for a private practitioner to follow. It required a lot of efforts. This is a case of uh, Dr. Park Hui-ung, which is a little bit simpler for a private practitioner to follow. This is not a full increase of video. Existing prosthesis is used and um, resin build up on natural teeth. In the textbook, it says video increase of 5 millimeters in anterior region can be done. With the prosthesis, the aesthetics of anterior so would be a problem. Therefore, for that purpose, a video can be increased. This is using the resin buildup. This is a good summary of the case. That's why I'm introducing it to you. When attrition or wearing is severe, vertical dimension can be increased using composite resin. When posterior region is stabilized, the anterior region can also be stabilized. Prosthesis in the posterior region, the porcelain can be reduced and the resin can be built up with a certain thickness. This can be maintained. This is not something clinicians do often, but I observed the long-term outcome, which was pretty good. So intraorally, the resin built up was made. The marks indicate the increase of the vertical dimension. The adjustment is made a little by little in the mouth. This is more convenient than reducing all the teeth at the same time. About 3 millimeters of increase of video was achieved. Implants are placed and the video is increased. Final restoration. By referencing the implants, the vertical dimension is adjusted. That's why the buildup on the anteriors and premolars remain stable. So it was maintained for a long term, four to five years. We may think resin buildup is not strong enough to stand for a long time, but uh, that was achieved due to the stable occlusion over the implants. It was completed pretty well. Clinicians can access this rather easily. I don't have photos, but um, I struggled to treat this patient, 80-year-old schoolmaster's case. Implants were placed 
on the maxilla and prosthesis was done in the mandible, but the teeth had attrition. Anterior teeth are worn down due to vertical pressure. The roots of endocrine fractured, so they were extracted. So the vertical dimension became very low, so teeth could not be made in the anterior region. Ultimately, there was attrition in the anterior teeth. It's hard to chew and uh, the gum can be damaged. So I decided to increase the video. Two implants are placed at number six. The lower anteriors are worn down so much that they cannot be restored. The resin buildup is done only at premolars. Resin buildup at four and five. Using the implants, the vertical dimension is slightly increased. If you compare these two cases, video is increased. This much of increase made uh, the superintendent very happy. He can chew without hurting the gum. We need to study to increase video, and you can refer to the simple resin buildup. Going back to the case under discussion, if surgery is difficult, as the professor said, slight increase of vertical dimension can be done to place implants. If the systemic diseases are under control, number one and two can be extracted. The patient is 66 years old, but uh, the teeth need to function for 20 more years. Therefore, more fundamental treatment can be done. Anteriors are extracted, and I don't like uh, the prosthesis at the posterior, so the vertical dimension should be increased slightly. And the resin build up at the lower anteriors, implants in the missing area. Uh, there's a systemic disease in this patient, but the uh, vertical dimension needs to be raised. It's a large scale treatment. Yes, this is a big treatment. May I ask some questions? Vertical dimension increase. In the first case, you use temporary provisional. How long do you need to do that for vertical dimension increase? We need to observe a TMJ for months to increase 3 or 4 millimeters in the anterior region. Unless the patient had a TMJ problem, I don't think we need to observe it that long. To be honest, the provisional prosthesis is not strong enough for proper chewing, so it cannot withstand for a long time. So I move on quickly. Rather than using the provisional, PFM or metal can be used. If that doesn't create any aesthetic problem, it's used for functioning and uh, changed to aesthetic one. Checking TMJ with a provisional for months, I don't agree with that. To maintain that, there should be residual teeth to have contact. Can the resin build up stand? It's better than we expect. In the ortho process, to treat a crossbite, sometimes we raise the vertical dimension a little bit and move teeth. Sometimes it is raised partially with uh, the resin buildup. For a short time, the resin buildup is okay. I ask the question if it is only. The resin buildup is covering the whole occlusion surface. Raising the vertical dimension is a challenging job because the whole teeth need to be worked on. For a private practitioner, it is difficult to reduce all the teeth at the same time unless you have a lab nearby. But um, the resin buildup can be easier to handle. Coming back to the case under discussion, 
if we assume to increase three or four millimeters, number three, 23, and uh, 34 and 34 would come in contact, and the buildup in the mandible can be made, but they can chew on only with that part. Temporary denture needs to be used. If that is used, maybe with that you need to determine the vertical dimension. What do you mean? If you use a temporary denture, using the temporary denture, the rest of the teeth will not come in contact on the left side, so we need to work on the prosthesis. The change of a cuff of the prosthesis in the upper left is too low, so it needs to be worked on. The margin doesn't fit either. So you need to increase the vertical dimension, yes. You didn't explain how long it takes. It goes with the prosthesis process. You don't wait. When you do resin buildup, and implants are placed, which takes uh, three or four months in the mandible. And uh, you're talking about that timeline. Actually, it doesn't take uh, three or four months. These days, I tested when the bone is good like that. When implants are placed, I load them at six weeks. It has to do with um, the surface. I do. ISQ test, BA or SOI advanced surface can be used from SLA. So if initial stability is good, four week loading can be done too. So six week loading is done. I don't wait for stabilization of TMJ. I just go along with the prosthesis process. But uh, sorry, I don't agree with you. Six week loading. There are patient factors. 66 years old and uh, systemic diseases are there. So it's a isn't it a little bit dangerous for six week loading? The patient has some um, systemic disease. I test every two weeks, provided the initial stability is gained. Every two weeks, I test. When initial stability is achieved, I don't experience problems. What about uh, Dr. Kim Kyung Won? Six week loading. I don't really load them early. I'm conservative because I still have the habit working at university hospital. Six week loading is too early. I wait for about eight weeks. It's very similar. Yes, uh, it's much earlier than before. Private practitioners talk about any time loading at the lower left when two or three implants are placed together. I believe we can load them much earlier. In today's case discussion, we talked about how to treat a patient with a collapsed vertical dimension and the systemic diseases. I would like to thank the dentist who sent us a very good case, and I would like to thank three doctors who gave us a lot of advices. This concludes the discussion. I am Dr. Jung Young-on. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Okay.